In this video, you'll discover how easy it is to run a PCI report in Titania Nipper. If you don't have the software already installed, you can download it via our website, titania.com. Simply create an account, request a free trial, and download the software. When you open the software, you'll see this Nipper home screen. The software can be run in demo mode with example devices which have built-in configurations that you can run the tests against, or to run the Nipper PCI audit on your own devices, Select New Report from the home screen. Choose the devices you want to audit and click Next to choose your report type. When you tick the PCI Audit box, Nipper automatically selects the default reports that it needs to run. That's because our PCI Audit is made up of several reports, including Nipper's Security Audit, the Vulnerability Audit, CIS Benchmarks, and the Configuration Report. A box will appear confirming that all these reports will run to audit the device. Now select OK. The next screen allows you to compare the report you're generating now with a previous audit you've run. Saving all your reports in XML means you can upload them here to compare any changes between audits. Click Next to continue and this will generate the audit report. A box then appears to confirm the report has been generated and also advises the time it's taken. In this instance, just 4 seconds. Click Finish to see the results. You can customize the report title within Tools and Settings. A summary of the reports you have generated is provided. As you've selected the PCI Audit, it summarizes the Security Audit, Vulnerability Audit, the CIS Benchmarks if applicable, and the Configuration Report. The scope of the devices chosen, in this case a Palo Alto firewall, is provided along with a high-level overview of the security issues identified. These are broken down into ratings and categories depending on their severity, with useful graphs that can be shared with others involved in the auditing process. The Vulnerability Audit Summary also breaks down the findings based on the severity. Please note that as there aren't any Cisco devices in this audit, the CIS benchmarks is left out of the report. Nipper provides lots of information in an easy-to-read format, and the hyperlinked Contents section helps you quickly navigate the report. The Vulnerability Audit Detail compares the operating system of your device against the National Vulnerability Database, highlighting vulnerabilities that are prevalent for that version of the operating system. Meanwhile, the Configuration Report provides a general overview of the device, so you can see any rules and routing options that are in place, so you can check against the PCI benchmarks. Let's look specifically at the multiple sections of the report that are relevant to the PCI requirements. For Requirement 1, the Configuration Report contains a section called Network Services. Click on this section in the contents to jump to a list of different network services configured on your device. Here, you can double-check that these services are configured correctly and are as you expected. All network services enabled on your scope or device will be identified and you can also use the configuration to identify all firewall and router rule sets. Here, you'll be provided with crucial information relating to permitted and denied network traffic. Next, we'll look at network filtering. Scroll up and select a hyperlink to go back to the start of the section, or right-click and go back. In the report contents of the network filtering section, all your security policies, along with their rules, and the trust networks they have in place will be displayed. This list of rules can be checked line by line for any issues on your device in accordance with the PCI benchmark. The next check within the first requirement of PCI compliance is to review issues and rule sets, such as any-to-any -any rules against the CVSS scoring system. Go back to the contents, choose the security audit, and select the section relating to the rules on the device. This will show any rules and if there are any issues to be aware of. The findings are broken down in the top right corner. For each finding, you'll see an overall score along with the impact the vulnerability could have on your system, the ease in which it could be exploited, how easy it would be to fix, and the type of issue it is. Here, you can see the findings along with easily readable summaries of the information. If you're auditing Cisco devices, you will also be provided with a command line to remediate the issue. 
Requirement 2 for PCI is do not use vendor supplied defaults for system passwords and other security parameters. To check this, go back to the configuration report and navigate to the authentication section. Here, you can review the history of all the user accounts and passwords that are not encrypted for user accounts and security roles. In this example, there are several users with passwords. Here, you can double check whether the passwords are encrypted or not. Here's an example of where one user isn't. Also, for this check, you can utilize the security audit, which will check as part of best practice for any user accounts which contain vulnerabilities such as password limits or credentials. Within the security audit, you can also customize the settings you want to audit against. Each report has its own settings, and by clicking into settings, you can filter how much or how little it checks. You can also define the limits. For example, if the maximum password age is at a different level for your business, you can amend this, along with password lengths and other information. This means you can customize your reports to meet your exact needs, as well as auditing against the PCI benchmark. This is the case for all the other reports, including the vulnerability audit and the CIS benchmark for Cisco iOS 12, 15, and ASA only. To evidence requirement 6, you need developed and maintained secure systems and applications. The vulnerability audit will help you demonstrate this. Head to the Contents section and select the Vulnerability Audit section, which will show any findings against the NIST NVD. The summaries for each finding provide an overall rating which combines the CVSS version 2 score. You'll see a summary of the vulnerability along with the device that's affected. References are provided so you can double-check the information and decide on how best to approach the vulnerability. If you find these results aren't relevant to your organization, you can use the reporting option to exclude issues. This removes them from the report completely, or you can add notes. By adding a note, the issue will remain in the report, but you can highlight there that the issue is not relevant or has been resolved, etc. Requirement 8 is identify and authenticate access to system components. For this check, the security audit will highlight issues where your user and password policies are in violation. Be sure to look for any user logon issues or admin account problems. You can adjust the settings to determine how much or how strict Nipper is on checks. Requirement 10 requires tracking and monitoring of all access to network resources and cardholder data. To monitor your network resources, you need to use the configuration report. From the contents, click the configuration report and look for information on network time protocols. In the network protocols section, you'll find information regarding the protocols used on your device. Here you can check things like time synchronization, which will help you meet requirement 10. Requirement 11 instructs to regularly test security systems and processes. Here's where the security audit is useful because it identifies all security issues that are related with your security systems and processes. For example, here we have identified an issue, a filter rule that allows packets from any source to any destination and any port. The security audit also has a recommendations and mitigation section, which helps break the findings down and categorize them into a table. Grouping issues together in terms of severity of the findings along with classifications on how quickly and how involved the remediation is to implement. This is very useful for sharing with teams who will do the remediation work. As you can see at a glance, which checks are going to be quick and easy to fix, which are more involved, and which ones are the highest priority. For ease of information sharing, all the tables will be complete with their links if you save this diagram as an HTML or PDF. Now you have completed all the automatable PCI DSS checks you can audit with Nipper. There are other reports within Nipper, which can provide other findings regarding your devices, but the demo you have just seen includes all the reports needed to cover the key elements of PCI DSS auditing. The settings within Nipper provide the flexibility to customize your reports, even the title and logo. You also have the option, if you've made changes to the settings, to save this as a profile so that the changes are saved for future use. This time-saving feature means you don't need to rekey the settings each time you go into Nipper to run your report. Once you've generated your report, 
you have the option to save it into multiple formats. HTML and PDF are recommended to ensure the hyperlinks stay live. If you're looking to share the report, the HTML file format makes it a much smaller document. You do also have the option to export sections of the report, such as the security issues or recommendations, to a CSV file, so you can put these into Excel, again for ease of sharing and reference. All items such as tables or diagrams can be exported in CSV or SQL to provide top-level information to key stakeholders. For any further help or advice on running a PCI DSS audit in Nipper, or for any queries, please get in touch with our team by selecting Contact Us on the website. Be sure to request a tailored demo of Nipper from the website to see how you could benefit. A complimentary trial is also available. Thank you for watching.